Welcome back investors, Jake here. This week on the stock market is going to be a bit more rocky than we'd like and the reason why is because it's looking more apparent that Russia will be invading Ukraine. And how do we know this? And the reason why is because it's being widely reported that the CIA has already gotten Russia's entire invasion strategy. Uh, Russia to invade Ukraine on Wednesday, the CIA and Pentagon have briefed Biden and NATO allies. So basically, uh, you know, if you spend three or four months amassing 130,000 troops on the border, then you've got a game plan for when you're eventually going to attack this country. It doesn't take a lot of money to slip to some Russian general somewhere to basically get the entire invasion strategy. So the CIA was briefing NATO allies and some German government official was included. They anonymously told German, uh, German media that basically the CIA knows everything. So more than likely, uh, obviously Biden and uh, the CIA have, have told the Ukrainians what Russia's game plan is. And more than likely, President Biden has told Putin, we already know what your targets are, where the troops are coming from, what you're going to do. Please, <laughs> don't invade the Ukraine. This would be uh, not, not, a great, not a great idea. So why? Why is Vladimir Putin so determined to, at this time, uh, invade Ukraine? And first of all, just his general mindset. He's a former KGB intelligence officer. Uh, he's been very consistent the last 20 years saying that it was a mistake. It was a mistake for the USSR to break up, a mistake for Moscow to relinquish control over these territories. So when we look at the map of NATO, and I think when the Soviet Union broke up, they assumed that NATO would dissolve and go away, but NATO never did. And when you look at the former uh, Soviet satellite states of Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, these are the ones in Eastern Europe, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania have already joined NATO. And this is touching uh, Russian territory on Russia's border. Belarus is still firmly under Russia control, but in 2014 there was a political revolution in Ukraine, and they basically ousted the Russian, uh, Russian, uh, the Russian-sponsored politicians that were in charge of the country. And Ukraine doesn't want to be under Russian dominion anymore. They want to be more closely tied and associated with Europe. Does that automatically mean NATO membership? No, not necessarily. But there are other uh, European cooperative initiatives that Ukraine potentially wants to be part of. And one of them is called the Three Seas Initiative. You have the Baltic Sea, the Adriatic Sea, and the Black Sea. And this is a, a cooperative effort between Central and Eastern European countries to basically improve economic and social ties. And you'll notice that Russia is not invited. They don't want Russia to participate. Traditionally, uh, for Europe, uh, energy, infrastructure, communications has always flowed west-east from Paris and Berlin to Moscow. But with these Eastern and Central European countries talking and communicating, they're trying to build north-south uh, communication, infrastructure, energy sharing resources. So this economically hurts Russia if uh, Eastern and Central European countries, even independent of the West, if they're cooperating and, uh, and, and cutting Russia out, then this, this long term is not economically in Russia's favor. So Vladimir Putin is getting up there in age. He's currently uh, 69 years old. And being a former KGB uh, intelligence officer, he's, he's seeing his opportunities of basically getting the band back together slowly slipping away over time. So they successfully took Crimea uh, in 2014. That was a big coup for his country. Uh, generally, he became more popular at home for doing this. And he's been sitting, sitting back for the last eight years thinking, well, what if we just took maybe Eastern Ukraine or the entire country. 
So let's actually talk about how exactly would this uh, invasion work. And before we go any further, I know that some of my viewers are Ukrainian. I know that some of my viewers are Russian. Everybody has probably a strong opinion one way or the other. All I can do is give you my opinion with my limited knowledge of their histories, their countries, their cultures. But from my perspective, uh, my understanding, I think Russia sucks. They don't respect human rights. They don't respect property rights. They don't, uh, they're not trying to innovate and compete with the world at all. What they have is a vast amount of energy and uh, still a pretty decent military, and they don't seem to want to join uh, the 21st century. They're uh, living in the past, focused on their glory days of, of the USSR. So there's a lot that Vladimir Putin could be doing to help the Russian economy, uh, improve the prospects for the Russian people, but that's not what his consideration is. His consideration is simply about power and uh, how to improve Russia's influence over the world without having to allow freedom of speech, freedom of press, uh, you know, true a true two or greater political party system in his country. He's not going to relinquish any power that he's obtained for himself or his family. So how would this invasion play out? And if history is any indication, uh, Russia will start with a false flag attack and say that Ukraine pro pro uh, provoked them. Ukraine attacked first, and they had to. They just had to defend themselves, go in with 130,000 troops. If you guys aren't familiar with this incident in history, it's called the Gliwitz Incident, in which uh, Hitler staged a false flag attack uh, from po Polish nationals. Obviously, this was all fake. But they said Poland attacked them first, and that was their justification for uh, Germany to invade Poland in 1939. And who also invaded Poland in 1939? And it was the Russians. Uh, it was it was Stalin. They basically split the country in half. Obviously, this was a temporary truce, and Stalin probably knew that. Uh, but they 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 decided to uh, invade Poland, and this is always how it goes. There's always a false flag attack first, so that your home propaganda, your home media, can report something to justify to your people why you're invading somebody else's country. So when Russia finally uh, <clears throat> does decide to initiate the, the, the attack, there will be a 48-hour uh, bombing period. Ukraine's air force is not very good, so uh, Russia will easily be able to take out their landing strips, take out their planes, take out their air defense systems, take out their uh, communication nodes. They want uh, different parts of the Ukrainian military to be uh, isolated from each other. Uh, so 48 hours of basically shock and awe, it's psychological warfare to uh, freak out the Ukrainian uh, ground forces so that they don't fight back. This is what Russia needs to happen. They need that they need the, the Ukrainian military to stand down and and not resist. And then once Russia's ground forces, go in, they've got to secure the capital basically within like 72 hours, about three days. And the reason why is because, uh, in my opinion, what, what Russia is trying to do now uh, in the age of the internet and social media, you know, people in Ukraine have iPhones, they have Galaxy tabs, there's going to be a lot of horrifying video uh, and images coming out of Ukraine immediately once the bombing starts. And I don't think world opinion is going to be very favorable to Russia once people start getting video and uh, pictures of uh, Ukrainian people being being killed. Uh, you know, are we really going to see blonde hair, blue eyed white Christians being bombed by Russia? And the entire world isn't going to be outraged uh, and and take action. Currently, it's already happening that tens of thousands of freedom fighters, or whatever you want to call them, anybody with an axe to grind who doesn't like Russia. So think about 
bad blood that any of these former Soviet bloc states might have, they're currently pouring into the Ukraine, uh, getting ready for this invasion so that they can get their chance to uh, kill Russian soldiers. So uh, Vladimir Putin needs to take Kiev as fast as possible, and then he's got to bring back some stooge to prop up as the legitimate president of Ukraine. I don't know if it'll be Viktor uh, Yanukovych. He was the president who was ousted in 2014. He currently is probably living very comfortably in exile in Russia. Uh, or if it'll be somebody else from his cabinet or administration prior to the Ukrainian revolution in 2014. So what is NATO's game plan once Russia invades Ukraine? And obviously they've been providing them with intelligence and humanitarian aid, such as medical supplies. But militarily, NATO wants to create uh, asymmetrical warfare and to slow down the invasion, to uh, basically bog down Russian forces so that they can't immediately prop up a new regime in the capital. So what's been happening here is uh, the United States and NATO has been flooding the country with ammunition, as simple as bullets. I don't know what percentage of Ukrainian households uh, are gun-owning households. Uh, I know AK-47s are very popular in Eastern Europe. But in general, uh, you don't want to give the Ukrainian military advanced weaponry, advanced technology, F-35s, because if the country falls, then this uh, equipment and technology just falls into Russian hands. However, NATO is more than happy to flood the country with anti-aircraft missiles and anti-tank uh, javelin missiles. This is asymmetrical warfare, where basically it took millions of dollars for Russia to build a tank or build an aircraft, but for tens of thousands of dollars, somebody hiding in the woods can take down one of these planes or blow up one of these tanks. In general, it's also just very demoralizing for a military when you've got basically a guerrilla insurgency behind enemy lines taking out your premier tech. Another reason why NATO will want to slow down the invasion of Ukraine by Russia is it gives time for people in these other countries that don't like Russia basically to rise up. Think Moldova, think Belarus, maybe Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan. I don't know the details of the, the governments currently in place, but my guess is that they're pro-Russian and, and under Russian authority or influence. And if the people of these countries don't like their leaders and Russia is distracted with their invasion of Ukraine, then this is a good time. This is a good time for protest, for civil unrest, to challenge uh, the, the, the proxy politicians that Russia has propped up in these other countries, while Russia can't uh, basically uh, commit forces to uh, defending these people. So this is why it's so important for Russia to quickly take Ukraine, establish uh, control over its military forces, prop up somebody to be uh, in charge of the country. Because I definitely think people in maybe Belarus or Kazakhstan or Georgia, I don't know, will take this as an opportunity where Russia is distracted to potentially have their own homegrown revolution. So my final thoughts are is I don't think this invasion of Ukraine is going to go as well as Vladimir Putin believes it will. He's 70 years old and very much a product of Cold War era thinking. And perhaps he has done the calculus of what the long term prospects are for Russia if they don't maintain control over some of these Eastern European countries. Is NATO going to ever just invade Russia out of, out of nowhere, and no, NATO's not going to do that. But the reason why all these countries want to join NATO is to stop Russia from someday in the future invading them. So by Russia arguing, well, we got to invade, otherwise they'll never be invadable ever again in the future. Uh, that's a very, very, uh, very strange argument to make. But in general, he's just not considering how devastating the economic impact will be in the short term. The sanctions that Western countries will place on Russia 
you know, just just think about it. Is, is Starbucks going to pull completely out of Russia? Is McDonald's going to completely pull out of Russia? Is Apple going to stop selling iPhones in Russia if Russia, you know, is a bad faith actor that invades its neighbors? Like, it's it's going to get bad for the Russian. It's going to get worse for the Russian economy. I understand that Europe is dependent on Russian energy, and and this is what this is the gamble that Vladimir Putin is making. Is uh, if you cut us off economically, then you can't have our energy anymore. This is gonna get this is gonna get interesting this week if he, if he actually does go in, guys. So what's gonna happen with the stock market if Russia does invade? Well, obviously nobody can predict the future. But my guess is is that the S and P would probably see a five to seven percent drop if war did break out. Now, luckily, I've already been protecting my portfolio in anticipation for other events in the market. So even though the S and P is slightly down at the time I'm filming this video, my brokerage account is actually positive, positive. and the reason why is because I've sold calls against my positions in Apple, Berkshire, and Texas Instruments, kind of as a hedge. Uh, so I'm holding on to a lot of cash, and if the market does have a huge sell-off later this week, my plan is to buy into it, to buy the dip, uh, and hopefully we can get a uh, resolution to this conflict one way or another uh, relatively soon, and we don't have uh, a, protra a protracted international conflict that is disruptive to global markets. Okay guys, if you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And please don't get into arguments or start fights in the comment section. You're not going to change anyone else's mind, and I don't even think it really makes you feel better. So please avoid fighting with other people about your politics or opinions on this issue. I know it's going to be very divisive going forward in the future. I just wanted to share my thoughts on uh, what potentially could play out this week. Till the next video, guys, take care.